what I can say about the infectious diseases in Singapore is a little bit of the history of uh, this uh, center here, which is the Communicable Disease Center, where I worked from 1998 to 2006. It's almost nine years. But I have a very good uh, knowledge of the background of the center here because I did some uh, research work before I left CDC because we were thinking that this place is going to be broken down, going to be demolished and it's good if we have some history of this uh, which we have presented in slides and which I think are also inside this book as well as in the multi-purpose hall where you can see the milestone of the center. So this uh, center actually started off as a Middleton Hospital and it was called Middleton Hospital because it was named by the founder, Dr. W.C.R. Middleton. And it was established in 1907. And that period of time, 1907, I think the medical ad advances and facilities were quite scarce. I think the first medical school was established in 1940 40 plus. So in 1907, <laughs> the medical things were quite scarce. And infectious diseases were quite uh, rampant and uh, at that period of time the history says that uh, this building was constructed more as a center for isolation and for quarantine and if you notice the structure of the center here is all in small small huts, huts in small boats 20 uh, 14 beds 14 beds it's not like a general hospital, we have 38 beds and 40 beds. It was more of a purpose of isolation and quarantine. And the diseases that were rampant at that period of time was actually smallpox, cholera, plague, malaria. These were the thing. And I think over the years, all these uh, diseases like chickenpox, uh, malaria, typhoid, Dengue fever are not so much of a concern to us. We have already progressed and this is very easily uh, managed by our physicians and by the centre. But what is our problem, what we are actually more concerned is, is our vulnerability to the emerging pathogens of diseases outbreak and the worst, worst disaster or the contagious disease that broke down in 2003 and I was the unit manager at the center at that period. That is something that uh, we had a victory of, at a cost. We had a lot of, we had losses and we had lessons that we have learned from that. And based on that, I think uh, we are now emerging out into building the NCID or the National Center of Infectious Diseases. The construction is already on the, is in progress and it is hoped to be ready by the year 2018. So the, the, the imaging diseases that have spread, we had nipple virus outbreak, we had chicken outbreaks, we used a dengue outbreaks. And all these was not that difficult except for the severe acute respiratory syndrome where we learned certain things and that we are able today to apply those lessons that we learned from that uh, uh, contagious outbreak so that when we had a H1N1 scare and we had an Ebola scare, we are actually quite prepared for combating any form of a contagious disease. But I must stress that we will not know because this virus is really an enemy to us. We do not know which enemy is going to strike and which virus is going to come about. But what is important is that we have to be emergency prepared at all times, at all the time. We cannot afford to be complacent. It, it was not really a matter of choice of my interest to work in the infectious disease setting. But uh, in the year 1998, uh, the nursing structure or the nursing organization in Tan Tok Seng was reorganized and I was working in Tan Tok Seng Hospital and at that period of time uh, this uh, Communicable Disease Center was also in the process of a new CDC coming up. We were actually planning for the new CDC even before 
before the SARS outbreak took place. So they, they required somebody uh, senior, somebody who would be able to work over the next uh, 10 years, 10 years, so that you can see the new CDC development coming up and plus see to the redevelopment process of the Communicable Disease Centre while, while the others could take uh, charge of the main hospital. And I was actually, uh, not say selected, I was asked whether I could come to Communicable Disease Centre because I was also quite a ripe age. They said this would be a good ground where you can give your input and then after that you can retire and call it a day. So that's why I was posted there in 1998. And when I was posted there in 1998, this, this structure of CDC was very, very bad. It was over 100 over years old, as you know. And there's a lot of redevelopments that have taken place. And, and all these developments that took place was a result of outbreaks. When we had the first Nipah virus outbreak, in uh, Singapore, this SOCJ was so small, so, so small to contain the outpatient, so now the SOC has enlarged. And when SRS outbreak took place, it was even worse. We had to segregate the patients from the uh, suspected, from the possible cases, from the others, so that they don't make. And this, uh, this uh, screening center was obviously not, not as uh, suitable and adaptable. We had to close down Ward 72, which is a paying class ward, and convert the consultation rooms to be able to uh, screen the patient and use 803 also to house patients that were non-suspected or did not have fever or did not have a travel uh, history. And from that on, now we built up the new screening center there, if you notice. It's a big screening center and cabin wards were put up to able to cope with the ever-rising number of cases that were coming in with a severe acute respiratory syndrome and they required to be isolated, they required to be in single rooms facilities. It could not be in open facilities like Ward 71 and we were very, very short of beds at that period of time. So much so that the ministry then decided that this is not, uh, not that adequate enough to be able to cope with the crisis the whole of Tan Tok Seng Hospital, main hospital, closed down and converted into a center for the, to hold on to the infectious diseases of SARS. My family was not really uh, scared of this infectious diseases and so forth, but uh, the, because if you, I do not know, if I, in earlier days when this Middleton Hospital was here, the infectious diseases, they had a gate, people cannot come in, they had to be put on the mask and gown and come in and then go out. And over the years, we have gone over that. We don't put on masks and gowns unless it is really necessary. What actually is required is the universal precautions or the standard precautions that you take. And you are quite safe if you have that immunity. You will not catch the infectious disease like that so easily. But if you ask me about the severe acute respiratory syndrome when it broke down, there was fear, there was fear. We cannot run away that we were not fearful. We were definitely at fear because our doctors were caught up with the disease. Our doctor died of the disease. Our nurses were caught up with the disease. Our nurse manager died of SCRS. So the fear was there. But what kept us going, what kept us going was our, our devotion and our commitment to the hospital and our devotion to the support that was given by the doctors, by the Infectious Disease Center. And we had a lot of support and a lot of help we had to get from the main hospital, Tan Tok Seng Hospital. Because this place did not have the support facilities. We do not have X-ray department. We did not have pharmacy. We did not have medical supply. All was coming from the main hospital. So with that type of support that we had, of course not forgetting the government and the Ministry of Health, that also was what had gave us all the support to send us nurses from the primary health care division and from the other sectors of the clinics to come in here and to give us the support. And that gave us the moral support. And also, I must not forget, the business people who donated food, who donated money, who donated items, that kept us going. So the spirit of uh, togetherness was there. 
that even we had Malaysian nurses, we had uh, nurses from China, we had nurses from all over other countries. We were standing together to fight against the combat. It was like a battlefield, we were fighting an enemy. So the fear was there, but the devotion and the commitment and the support that was coming, that kept us going. The nursing diseases of infectious diseases, uh, if you take into the year of uh, 1970s or 1980 when the first HIV, I think it's 1980 for the first HIV or 1970 plot that was detected, people were fearful to come here to work. And we had problem of posting nurses to come here to work because they had a fear of HIV. They also had a fear of other infectious diseases, but that was not so much of a concern, but the more concern was the HIV. So we had to persuade them to come here to work. And we also had to uh, reorganize our structure to give them certain forms of incentive so that they would come here. And therefore, we Ministry of Health and the, the union came to an agreement that any nurse who comes here will give a, a, a special allowance of $125 over three months. So that was part of the incentive to make them come here and work. And in 1992, when Tan Tok Seng Hospital restructured, the nurses had to work from 7 o'clock to 3 p.m. But then we allowed our nurses here to work 7 to 2. We did not extend that hour. It was more of a form of incentive. And I think that helped a bit for the nurses to come on and to come here and work. And then the fear of HIV went off because through education, public education, and through the training courses that they obtain and the NYP and all that. The HIV is not a transmissible disease by normal contact. It is through a sexually uh, transmitted disease. So there is not, not fear. But this fear was eradicated from them. And I think today the nurses are, do not have the fear of nursing an HIV patient. Previously, all, most of the HIV patients used to be coming here to be nursed because this was a center that was dealing with HIV. But today, HIV patients are all over Singapore. They are in SGH, they are in NUH, in any hospital, HIV patients can be nursed in a general ward. But what is important is the universal precautions, uh, contact precautions of using a mask or gown and uh, not touching the fluid, and not getting needle stick injury, and that will keep. And I think what your question, what nurses are, Nurses are no longer fearful of working in an infectious disease setting and we have Ebola coming up, the centre has been put up and nurses have volunteered to, to go in and to work with the Ebola patient. The training, the training and the preparation of the nurses of today to manage infectious diseases has changed radically and there is no, no not that, that fear is not there. Okay, uh, basically, I think uh, it goes boils back down to the SARS again, because this SARS thing will come up again. Because this is the one that has really taught us uh, a good lesson. Number one, today the nurse is a uh, battle battle gear prepared. Battle gear prepared meaning that any nurse that comes into the service today will be mass fitted. Previously, we don't have mass fitting. They are mass fitted and the mask that you are is already indicated on your chart. So any form of disease outbreak, I know what type of mask I have to wear and what size I have to wear. And they are also trained in other forms of how to use a PPE, PPE, personal protective equipment, the proper use of PPE. Because if you do not use the PPE properly, then it's of no use you are more prone to be here. Huh? The hand washing technique, the seven steps of hand washing, these are all important. So we are all battle here. Now coming to the other, other important point that we learned in, during the SARS was the contact tracing. The contact tracing regime is very important because we, we, because we want to know who is the last contact with the person who 
who has been diagnosed. And in order to do that, we have uh, implemented the contact tracing regime. And you will note that any patient or any visitor that comes to the hospital have to register before they can go and see the patient. So that is another area that will help us to deal with any form of uh, outbreak situation. The third thing is the communication. Communication is 100% important in any form of battlefield or virus outbreak or if you're any of You must be able to communicate. You must know what is happening. So communication has uh, taken place in the form of Ministry of Health coming down, from the government official agencies coming down. And from here itself, we have surveillance reports we, every weekend. Or you can go into your system, they will give you a surveillance report of outbreak happening in China or happening in any part of the country. So you are very well versed with the thing. And we also have an emergency disaster response team. But this emergency response, I think, more for the doctor. They have stage one, stage two. The yellow alert, the green alert, and the red alert. So all are very well set up. So that is a second thing communicate. Then coming to the ward area itself. The ward areas are now constructed, not like the previous time. If you walk, walk into our Tan Tok Seng Hospital ward, we have a cubicle type of setting. So, so they are all contained in a cubicle and more space. Lying most space. And the hospital, the ministry has also been very kind to give us money, facilities to have more isolation rooms. If you notice here, last time we only had one isolation room. Today, Ward 72, I think there's six negative pressure isolation room. At all the wards in Tan Tok Seng every level has got an isolation room, including intensive care units and so forth. So we are already. Uh, and the facilities are concerned. The other thing is the uh, tracking of uh, people with uh, fever or the diseases is not only related to the hospital setting. The polyclinics are alerted if they are they, to take the temperature. Of the, the schools are alerted that they have to take the temperature of the children. The child care centers are alerted that they have. So we have actually been trained through the experience that we have. These are the important factors. And of course, the, the enough of supplies, the bulk supplies of masks, gowns, and PPEs are controlled by our emergency team at the Ministry of Health to make sure that these supplies are there. As I have mentioned that the threat is always going to be there. We cannot run away from threat. And uh, what type of threat and what type of violence is going to come, we cannot predict. We cannot predict. It may not be SAR, it may not be NIPA, it can be somebody, something new. But what, 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 what we have learned that whatever, whatever virus comes, the important thing is isolation, containment, public education, and communication, and togetherness. And when a virus strikes or, vi or an enemy strikes, you cannot fight alone. You have to get support from all sources, not necessarily nurses. As I said during SARS, we had support from the hotel, we had support from business people. Hotel give us food. So it becomes a fight against the war, fight against the battle. And whether we are adequately equipped, and I think uh, we should be adequately equipped because I think uh, all the hospitals have got facilities of isolation. Government has given them money to build up facilities. And our N National Center of Infectious Disease Center is a 14-story building coming out with research facility, with isolation rooms. And uh, a lot of things are happening there, how to contain, where, how, why the patient comes, how the patient goes out, how to screen the patient. How to have a, when the patient is admitted, the patient cannot meet the relatives. He has to communicate with the, with the relatives, so there are systems all coming. So where the patient and relative can communicate despite the fact that the patient is under isolation. And the other thing that we learned here was that when you put a patient into an isolation room, it's like a prison cell. 
and the person feels horrible. He wants to run out because the windows are closed and all ventilation going on. So we have facilities of television. Television to be available inside the room, full connectivity to be available. We, in the case of uh, dealing with an emergency situation like that, it is not your class status, whether A, B or C. Every, everybody will have the same facility because they need to communicate. They need to watch TV. Otherwise, they go mad, they will run out. And last time when we had here, we had the National Council of Social Services who donated television for every of the cabin, cabin rooms. So, with the NCID coming up, and we also have a more doctors trained in infectious diseases today. Previously, when I was working here, the number of doctors trained in infectious diseases were a handful. Today, I think we have four times the number of what we had in the early 1970s. And I think there is also a lot of research going on on the infectious diseases. We have a research laboratory here, and I think CDC has also signed some project of research with some other people that uh, Dr. Liu is doing on dengue. So, knowledge-wise, experience-wise, facilities-wise, I think we are there. But that does not in any way mean that we can be complacent. We have to train our nurses, we have to train our healthcare workers on the use of PPE and time and again give them refresher courses. We run drills, we have run certain drills here to make sure that our system is, is workable. And that has to be the way. Yeah, we are actually, nursing is already looking into this uh, aspect that, as I mentioned earlier, that we had problem of putting people here, young people, and most of the people that were put here were elderly or old people, but young people, young nurses did not want to come. So we have started whereby the Nanyang Polytechnic students, they are posted here for their attachment to get used to the atmosphere and to know what is happening here so that we can encourage them to take up infections in this nursing. And we also have the infection control training module going on. Infection training module means that during the induction period, they undergo, they learn the infection control training model. So they do not have the myth of that infectious disease thing. We clear that myth of that HIV is not transmitted through this type of a thing. And infectious disease is not really a scare. So the third thing that we are doing for the nursing profession is that those people who are working and posted here young, we must look after them. And we have looked after them in the sense that we offer them opportunity to go overseas for attachment, help manpower, level skills attachment, or conferences that are going on to give them more openness and get rid of that idea that infectious disease is that boredom and there is no progress and that it is a Sahara zone and you, you will not go far when you are here. So, we encourage them to take out scholarships, to take out advance, and even promotions. And uh, pre previously, when we had that, it, the people working here found that the promotions taking place in the main hospital is easier to get promoted, <laughs> to get faster promotion when you are working in the acute hospital. But today, we find that whether you are there or you are here, we will judge you on your performance and on your contribution. So, we increase the number or uh, promotion in proportion that just because you are here and they are there, that is acute and this is, may not be acute during the time that we don't have outbreak, but when the outbreak takes place, it becomes double acute, right? So the people here also, that we give them the response that and encourage them that infectious disease is not that uh, difficult and not that, that you cannot uh, move or you cannot progress.